listen to this track, bitch. Good, lovely folks. It is Talk Ish Monday. I am back. You know who I be, Queen Mother B, Sasha Fierce, honey, the chosen one, Mufasa, bitch, Nala, Blue Ivy, Jesus. <laughs> what up, y'all? I am so happy to be back. Sorry I didn't do uh, a, my Scandalous Thursday last week. I'll be back this week. I had a long week yet last week. Last week tried me, bitch, but it is a new week. I am so happy, y'all. Ratchet TV is back. We are back in effect. Fuck basketball wise. Fuck Shiny O'Neal and that boring ass show they put us through for the last two months. Ratchet Mondays are back with Love and Hip Hop New York. It is season four or five, I think, of um, Love and Hip Hop New York. Um... I give the season four or five premiere of Love and Hip Hop New York um, a B minus, maybe C plus. Um, it gave us a little bit of the ratchet that we missed, that we needed. I can tell it's going to warm up as the season go. Um, nothing beats Atlanta though, honey. But uh, they came back with somewhat of a bang. It was like a pop, you know, like a small orgasm. But, um... Let's get into some of my favorite moments from tonight's episode, you guys. Yay. So the first thing that caught my attention was um, Yandy and Lil Mandisi having dinner together. And she tells us that they told the little boy that Mandisi went to the army, that he was over there in Afghanistan or Iraq and some shit fighting for our country. I'm like, Lord, these people done told this damn boy that his daddy is an American hero. I'm like, what kind of shit is this? And then the little boy was like, I already know my daddy not at the war. He ain't in the war. He in jail. And Yandy like, how you know that? He was like, because I was listening. You thought I was asleep, but I wasn't. I was really listening. I be listening when y'all be fucking too. When you be saying, man, DC, stop hitting me right there. That hurt when you hit me right there in my hip bone. But <laughs> And I'm like, oh my God, kids are grown. Watch what the fuck you say around kids, honey, because they hurt and they see everything. So I was like, Lord Jesus, I hope Mandisi get out of jail. I don't see it happening, honey. He ain't going to get no kind of get out of jail free card. That nigga is stuck, honey. He will not be passing go no time soon. Rest in peace, Mandisi, nigga, because we won't be seeing you no more, no time soon. Then we're introduced um, to Tara, who is one of the newest ladies to join Love & Hip Hop New York. And she is Peter Gunn's baby mama. They have two children together, two small boys. And we see her getting out of a fucked up ass bathtub. With and that shit look like some shit from the movie Psycho from back in the day. It just didn't look right. That apartment was the size of my bedroom, honey. And she talking about how she done been through it all with this nigga and it stuck by him through everything. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna stick with a nigga. We ain't gonna be living in a motherfucking shoebox, bitch. This nigga at least better have me in a manchon. And I need to have all the furs and all the lube, Louboutins and the Manolo Bolognese and Celine bags and Hermes burgers. If you about to take me through some shit, you ain't gonna be having me in a motherfucking shack and a motherfucking treehouse and shit putting up with your bullshit. No, sir, no, ma'am. Then that she going there, he sitting on that old rusty ass couch like they got it from out the alleyway or some shit and drug it in the house and dusted that bitch off and said, ooh, this is a new couch. And she talking about some, she wants some. How you gonna be trying to throw some pussy at a nigga that got you living in a motherfucking tampon box, bitch. I don't even understand what's going on, bitch. He wouldn't even be able to smell this pussy, honey. When he got her sitting over there looking like she on welfare, food stamps, WIC checks, bitch, SSI checks. He looked like he got home every check that you can possibly get from the motherfucking government, bitch. No, God, no, sir. The nigga wouldn't even be able to look at me twice. And talking about something you want some dick. That's how your ass got them damn two kids sitting over there crying every goddamn night trying to get some dick, bitch. Get your life together. Get your life, get your mind right, girl. Then we go to the showcase where we are introduced to another new character named Amina Butterfly. 
cricket, grasshopper, bumblebee, I don't know what the fuck, moth, flying saucer, I don't know what the fuck the bitch name is. She come out there singing some old sad ass song about a nigga that she love and a nigga that she love is Peter and Peter in the audience with his baby mama. And you, this is why I be trying to tell y'all girls on uh, Ask Keisha and Mo, we be trying to school y'all. This shit is real out here. You know how many times I done been in situations where a nigga got his main bitch in the room and then the chick that he trying to fuck or a bitch he is fucking sitting right there in the same room and they in the speaking to each other and shit and this motherfucker just sitting there with a smile on his face. Shit gets real hoes. Don't give a fuck. They'll play along like they just your man friend and be sucking his dick five seconds later. Don't trust these niggas and these hoes out here. Your man Thomas, he got a friend, bitch. He They got a friend, all right. He, that bitch got a friend in me. And that mean friend in me, that mean he got his dick up in her at night. Don't trust that shit, bitch. That was some old shady ass shit for Peter to bring his bitch to another event where his bitch is performing at. And he managing this hoe. But then I just want to touch on Mina teeth. Mina, obviously, she got one of them, like, bridges in her teeth where you have sucked your thumb too long as a child or you didn't have too many dicks up in your mouth. She the type of bitch that will go to sleep with your man's dick in her mouth, bitch. And that is her way of going to sleep. She just like... <sighs> you okay, babe? You okay? Like, she gnaws on dick all night like it's chewing tobacco, bitch. That bitch teeth is fucked up. She can't talk worth a damn. She talk with a lisp. She look like she stutter. She like she slob at the mouth. Like, girl, bye, man. You trying to be somebody's side chick, bitch. And you look like you need a root canal. A teeth whitening, bitch. Braces. Then to Harry and Joe in the bed, and he talking about her, so he wants some of that good Hello Kitty, some of that snatch back. And she like, no, Poppy, you can't get none of this pussy until the STD test come back. And I'm like, say what, nigga? Not only have you had to let this nigga, you had to test this nigga for drugs, now you test this nigga for STD, and you talking about you love him? Oh, okay. Bitch, it ain't that much love in the motherfucking world for me to be having to drug test a nigga and get this, ST, this nigga STD test every motherfucking five seconds. Bitch, look at your life and explain to me how this shit is okay in your mind. He is not the nigga for you. He is a crackhead and he got a fucked up ass dick. That dick is sick, bitch. And you talking about some he is the love of your life, ma'am? No, guy. Yeah, we all need to get tested. Please get tested for anything, honey. I just got tested negative. But ain't no way in hell I'm going to be dating some nigga that got a crack problem and his dick is sick. His dick is on life support, bitch. And he's the love of your life. I just don't get what the fuck is going on in the world. This is what the world has come to. Martin Luther King did not fight for us to be the jackasses that we are nowadays. Niggas is stupid. Then they switched her, Mina and Pete up in the studio singing another love song another sad love song shit that's racking my brain new baby and i'm just like what the fuck and she like please don't leave don't leave me tonight please don't leave this thing and he's like girl you know i can't stay i gotta get home to my family and she like please come on stay play my piano keys and then she lifts up her shirt shirt you see she got a whole keyboard on her motherfucking side of her stomach bitch and he get to kiss on her and he Sling her ass up on the piano. I'm like, go ahead on, Peter. Shit, crack her back open tonight, nigga. Put that dick all the way up in her spleen, my nigga. <laughs> Clear her off all lung cancer. <laughs> and they get to smashing. And next thing you know, the next day, they cut to Terry, his baby mama, at the park. And she talking about somehow she been blowing this nigga up all night because he didn't come to fuck home. And he meets her ass at the park. And she like, where the fuck you been? I'm talking about I was in the studio till 4 o'clock. And then after that, I went such and such place. And she was like, so you ain't see me calling you? And she was like, but I had my ring off. And she was like, well, how the fuck your ring off, nigga? And then I see you all up on Instagram and shit. Hugged up with Mina. She all up on your land, up on your chest. And he like, she wasn't laying on my chest. She just leaned over and just snapped the picture. Boy, niggas will come up with a lie in a hot second. Bitches, they will drive y'all ass crazy with these lies. Make you believe this shit. Make you think you're crazy. That was a good ass lie. He covered that shit up really quick. But then he fucked up by talking about some... You been calling me all night. You been blowing on my phone all night. And she like, well, how you know I have been blowing up your phone all night if your 
phone was off, if your ring was off. Now, which one is a nigga? Right then and there, she should have molly whopped that nigga. She should have gave that nigga one of Tahiri's whole sit downs. M nigga, me and that nigga would have been fighting on the motherfucking schoolyard. Right then and there, ain't no way in hell. Like, girl, you know he was lying. You know, already set up her and said that while you was pregnant, he got a baby. He had a baby on you that he didn't even tell your ass about. And you still sticking with this nigga? This nigga ain't got two nickels to rub with. And you sticking with a nigga that ain't even got shit. Bitch, what's gonna happen when you do find a nigga that got something? You really gonna be a dumbass fool. Y'all better stop being fools for these niggas. They gonna drag y'all ass through the motherfucking mud. Y'all giving these niggas y'all pretty ears and shit. Had y'all walking around here looking like the walking dead and bullshit after some old lousy ass dick and some lousy ass excuses and fucked up sleepless ass nights. No, God. That's why I left my motherfucking relationship because she is too pretty for the bullshit. She ain't got time for it, honey. I got me a new thing. <laughs> Child, bye. But, um, then we see Mandy on the phone with Mandy C, aka Mandy. Um, and he. And on the phone talking about somehow his court hearing was delayed once again. And she like, damn, that's fucked up. But I mean, you could at least tell me I'm pretty today. And he like, bitch, what the fuck you talking about? I could tell you you pretty today, bitch. Did you just hear me say my court hearing got canceled, bitch? You talking about I need to tell you you pretty? Bitch, get your motherfucking life. And she got to add to I mean, well, you need to at least make me feel like we still in a relationship. Um, newsflash, Yandy, you all are not in a relationship anymore. You are pen pals. You are bosom buddies, bitch. You are phone friends. <sighs> y'all are not in a relationship no more. As soon as that judge clicked the gavel and said, nigga, you locked up. Yeah, I we don't even know when you're going to get out. I would have chucked that nigga up the deuce. You're not about to get my good years, nigga. We going to continue to co-parent this shit from over the phone, text message, or whatever the fuck you do with a nigga in jail. But Keisha Renee Irvin ain't holding no nigga down that's in jail. I am sorry. I might love your ass to the motherfucking core, bitch. But I can't be your girlfriend. And I can't even hold you or touch you or lay down with you at night. We can't fuck. We can't go on a date or do nothing. We can't even Skype each other, my nigga. And I'm talking about you, my boyfriend. Then we see Peter getting his old yellow light bright ass up the next day to go home after spending another night with Amina. And I see why he likes spending nights over Amina house. Mina got more than one room up in that bitch. Mina got more than a living room, a bathroom, and a bedroom like he got at home. This bitch got her a full, you know, crib going on. She like she got at least got a living room, kitchen, dining room, and bedroom, and a full bath. So yeah, he don't want to be over there in that shoebox with Tara. And she like, no, daddy, won't you stay? And he like, I got to go because your breath is on 10 million right now. She like, oh, what you say? And you could just tell she still had that nigga dick on her breath from last night. I know her breath smelled like hot flaming Doritos dick. Like, oh my God. Ain't nothing worse than waking up with dick on your breath the next morning. Y'all know y'all done woke up with dick on your breath the next morning. Come on, just keep it all the way 100. And I know that shit was hot and musty and murky. That shit probably smelled like a swamp in Louisiana. And then the last thing that caught my attention was the boom at the end. When Rich was getting all up in Amina and um, Peter's business. He's like, I mean, don't you know you the side chick? You need to play your position. She like, oh, excuse you. I ain't the side chick. I am Mrs. Peter Panky. And sideboard, how are y'all dating a nigga named Peter Panky? This nigga name might as well be London Bridge falling down, patty cake, patty cake, baker man. Like, what the fuck, bitches? Get y'all motherfucking life in order to date a nigga named Peter Panky. And talk, I'm Mrs. Panky. I wouldn't even tell nobody that bullshit. But this bitch tells us that they didn't crap off and got married, and you still on the low, bitch. Nobody still supposed to know about your ass, and you the, you the missus, but you still the side bitch. You still the secret bitch. How does that shit work? I don't even fucking know, bitch. This is some sci-fi bullshit that needs to be on the sci-fi channel. I ain't got time for this shit. And I'm like, goddamn, way too terrifying out that she thought she was the main bitch and really she the side mistress, bitch, because his artist that he's managing is the main bitch. Girl, I ain't got time for this. This is some old bootleg Stevie J and Mimi shit that's less interesting, but it's kind of interesting because it's some fucked up ass bullshit. And I can't wait to see Tara slap the shit out of Miss Panky. Woo! So that was my review. I love you all so much. Have a blessed, wonderful night. Love you.